Hi there, and welcome to the HT2 channel. This week, we are going to cover some basics around what you should do to make your home safer from disasters. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some tip time. Welcome back. I am Kelly and I will guide you through this week's video where we will look at disaster safety measures for your home. We will cover a lot of information. However, this list may not be all inclusive and you may want to speak with your insurance agent or bring in a consultant to have an assessment of your current needs. Albeit, we share a lot of very practical information and help to get you to a place where you should be able to sleep better at night. The first step in this process is to assess your risk. Where do you live? What type of home do you have? What are the likely types of disasters to occur near you? Where you live will dictate a lot of what can or will occur. In the Seattle area, as an example, we really don't have to prepare for hurricanes. Whereas we should be planning for and mitigating against risk from earthquakes, windstorms, severe weather, urban and rural flooding, tsunamis, seiches, and beyond. Look at your county's risk assessment to learn more about your specific risks. The type of home you live in should also be examined. Do you live in a high-rise apartment, an unreinforced historic building, or a wood frame single family home? Each of these structures will likely have their own drawbacks and benefits. As an example, a third story apartment or condominium will fare better against a tsunami than a ground level unit would. The same could be said for a wood framed single family home versus a brick tutor with unreinforced masonry. If you feel that your residence is too risky, you have some choices. You could try to mitigate the identified risk or if you can choose to move. The best option would be to consider these risks prior to moving into a residence that has higher risk. If you elect to mitigate, you may want to consider the following items. If you have a single family home that was built prior to seismic building codes being established, which is generally thought to be in the 1980s, then you may want to consider having your home seismically retrofit. There are classes you can take so that you can elect to do this work yourself, or you can hire a certified contractor to make the upgrade. You should also follow the steps we outlined in conducting a hazard hunt in a previous tip that will help you to identify other areas in need of mitigation, like securing heavy furniture, installing seismic safety film on windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors, and other items. You should also install safety devices throughout your home. You should have smoke and carbon monoxide detectors throughout your home and follow the National Fire Protection Association, or NFPA for short, and manufacturer guidelines on installation locations and maintenance. You may be surprised to learn that it is recommended by most manufacturers that you use a vacuum extension tube to remove buildup and debris on the alarm openings. Of course, you want to ensure that you have the necessary supplies to help your family recover from an interruption. So make sure to stock up on your disaster supplies and add your comfort items to your kits. You may also wanna consider the addition of a generator. Lastly, you should ensure that everyone knows what to do in the event of an emergency or disaster. Make sure to talk about fire prevention and response. Establish your evacuation routes with at least two means of exit from each room in your home and do drills with your family. Make sure everyone knows where to assemble once outside. Discuss earthquake threats and reinforce the proper response of drop, cover, and hold on. Go room by room to identify the safe spaces in each room so that everyone knows exactly where to go immediately for each room. Remember to try to get under a sturdy piece of furniture or interior wall away from windows and other items that may fall upon you. Once again, do drills for earthquakes too. Hide candy under tables and desks to make it rewarding for your little ones. 
Lastly, have everyone take a class on first aid and CPR. In a disaster, first responders may not be able to get to you quickly or at all. This is a lot to take in, we get it, but it can be done over time. So what we would suggest is to do one thing within the next 48 hours to get better prepared and you will be on your way to having your plans in place. Well, that wraps it up for this week. We hope you walked away with some useful information that you can use to make your home more disaster proof. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. See you next week and good luck with your home's disaster proof plans.